So for this week's clinical file, we have Jonah. And Jonah is a 53-year-old male with a history of coronary artery disease, CAD, and who is being treated in the acute care hospital. Upon a review of the medical chart, the patient has an elevated creatine kinase CK biomarker. Which of the following conditions is the most likely present? So we got A, rhabdomyolysis, B, myasthenia gravis, C, is rheumatoid arthritis, and D, is gouty arthritis. All right. So I was just telling everybody, for those of you on the podcast, I was just telling everybody how when you're preparing for the MPTE, you got to know your biomarkers as well. And we're going to dive into that here in a moment. All right. And so I'm going to take this question piece by piece to show you exactly how I'm thinking about it. Now, Jonah is a 53 year old male. And I always look at the age group. I think that that helps you sometimes. Not for every question, but it does help you sometimes when you're trying to figure out what the diagnosis is and so forth. And so 53-year-old male with a history of coronary artery disease. We know the heart has the coronary arteries. The, those arteries are the ones that supply the heart with blood flow. We good there? Okay. So the patient has coronary artery disease and most times it's due to like atherosclerosis, you know, the buildup of plaque inside those arteries. And then the patient's not able to get very good blood flow to the heart tissue. All right. So that's the things that are really going through my mind right now. It says the patient has a history of coronary artery disease and who is being treated in the acute care hospital. Now, I don't know why they're there. I just know that they have that history. Let's continue down. It says upon a review of the medical chart, the patient has an elevated creatine kinase biomarker. Let's go ahead and stop there. This is going to be important as we move forward. So elevated creatine kinase, what are you thinking? What is that making you think of? Something specific? Because when I'm thinking of it, the first thing that really comes to mind, to be honest with you, is my high school days, like when I was trying to uh, bulk up and all that stuff. Now, I wasn't using no dang steroids. Now, I ain't doing none of that. But one thing I was doing was uh, creatine. They call it creatine, right? You would take this powder and put it in all your drinks and your water and whatever it is to try to, to bulk up, right? And so anytime I ever hear the word creatine, I think muscle. And that's how I want you to think about this as, as well, all right? Creatine kinase is a biomarker that gets released when there's a lot of muscle damage, all right? So if you were tearing a lot of muscles or if you just had a lot of breakdown of your muscles, one thing that can happen is a release of creatine kinase. And when we see this in elevated, uh, when we see this in your bloodstream and it's elevated, then it's like, hmm, is there some type of muscular based problem pathology that's going on that's causing a breakdown of the muscle tissue? Is that making sense right now? All right. So as we move to the last sentence of the question, also known as uh, the question stem, it says, which of the following uh, conditions is the most likely present? So then we have A, rhabdomyolysis, B, myasthenia gravis, C, rheumatoid arthritis, and D is gouty arthritis. You ready to go to work? Let's start breaking these down. So A, rhabdomyolysis. What do you think about that one? Rhabdo myolysis. This is one thing that happens to a patient a lot of times when they're taking medications like a statin drug. Have you ever heard of that? Well, if your patient has atherosclerosis, a lot of times they'll take something like a torvastatin. Um, and these drugs, what they do is they assist with a person's cholesterol level. All right. And helping to bring that down. Well, one of the side of adverse effects of that medication is the breakdown of muscle tissue, AKA rhabdomyolysis. Now I'm not just talking about little breakdown. I'm talking about like widespread, you know, breakdown of these muscle tissues, which release creatine kinase. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense to me. And why I really like A as an answer choice is, you know, coronary artery disease, we already spoke about it. Like one of the major reasons why somebody has that is atherosclerosis, the buildup of plaque. It makes sense that the patient would be taking a statin drug. 
And then we know that a potential adverse effect of that medication is the breakdown of muscle tissues, especially the thighs. That's where it targets a lot. Those proximal muscles, especially the quadricep area. And so I'm like, hmm, rhabdomyolysis looks like a good answer. Doesn't mean it's correct, but, you know, let's continue down. B says myasthenia gravis. Do we expect to see creatine kinase biomarker? A lot of people selected this answer, actually. And the thing is, I, I get it. Myasthenia gravis does have a lot to deal with the muscles. It's a neuromuscular condition. It deals with this thing called acetylcholine and how the receptors can be affected. The acetylcholine neurotransmitter can be affected. And I don't want to go into all the technical babble right now. What I want you to know is that myasthenia gravis is a neuromuscular condition where we're not able to get very good connection between the nerves and the muscles. Why? Well, it's because acetylcholine. It's, it's a signal. It's, it, 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 it's, it, it's a neurotransmitter. It allows us to get that signal from one place to the next and allow us to get that muscular contraction. If we don't have acetylcholine, the muscles start to become weak. Now, here's the deal. Does myasthenia gravis really have widespread muscle breakdown? Are we seeing muscles that are being damaged necessarily? I would say not. This is more of a neuromuscular junction type of pathology where it's really affecting against acetylcholine. Now, what type of marker would I be looking for? Like a biomarker, something related to acetylcholine, some type of antibody related to acetylcholine. All right. Also known as ACH. I'm sure you've probably seen it come across, you know, in, in one of your neuro classes. Do I expect this to be the right answer? I would say no. Again, the creatine kinase doesn't make sense for that one. Let's go to C. C says rheumatoid arthritis. A very common condition shows up on the exam a lot, you know, your practice exams and so forth. Does that have creatine kinase that's elevated? I would say no. And the reason being is Rheumatoid arthritis typically produces an elevated ESR or elevated CRP. Let me go into those. So rheumatoid arthritis, a lot of times you'll see if you run labs on that patient, they have an increased E as in Edgar, S as in Sarah, R as in Roger. And it stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So you might be like, what the heck, ESR? Like, what, what is that really for? Well, that lab value looks at inflammation in the body. If it's elevated, it lets us know that the patient's having some type of inflammatory condition that's going on. We tend to see that elevated. Again, not creatine kinase, an elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate. The other one that you could see is an elevated C-reactive protein, CRP. Have y'all ever heard of that one? Put it down, CRP, down below for those of you live with me right now, if you've seen that before. CRP come up. Well, it's called C-reactive protein. Again, it shows up in patients who have some type of acute inflammatory condition that's, that, that's showing up in their body. And again, it shows up with rheumatoid arthritis. Again, I say, you know... I wouldn't really expect a problem with creatine kinase with someone with rheumatoid arthritis. I'm going to go ahead and get that one out. All right. Let's look at D. D says gouty arthritis. Oh, another one comes up. And this is very tempting for me to try to pick rheumatoid or gouty arthritis. They're both arthritises, right? It's like, dang, which one do I want to pick? Well, gouty arthritis... First of all, I like that it is found in males, all right? So that makes sense. But when you have a patient who has gout, one of the lab values that's elevated for that patient, one of the biomarkers is uric acid. Now, there's a few other ones that can be as well. But uric acid is one of the major ones that we look at, and you need to write this down in your notes, super important. Now, do I see a lot of problems with creatine kinase in the muscles? No, because gout is something where there's a buildup of uric acid in the body and it creates these urate crystals that find their way into the joints. And it, it, of course, it's kind of like these like knives that are inside your joints. It primarily affects the uh, first meta, uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint. 
I don't know what I was about to say, but it's the MTP metatarsal phalangeal joint. And it's kind of like having these knives like inside that joint and it flares it up and it's, it's very painful. Again, what am I looking for with a gout, uh, a patient with gout? I'm looking for a high level of uric acid in their bloodstream. Now, is again, is that consistent with the muscle system? No, I don't expect to see elevated creatine kinase. I'm going to go ahead and put a nice X next to Diaz and dog. And then that leaves us with our best answer of rhabdomyolysis. All right, there you go. I mean, as we solve through this question, what were we really looking for? We were looking for a, a condition that had most to do with the muscular system rather than something like the joints or the bones. Now, if you really look at your answer choice, you could see that. A, which was rhabdomyolysis. B, which is myasthenia gravis. Those were both you know, in the muscle neighborhood, right? Those were kind of talking about the muscle. Rhabdomyolysis was the most specific for the muscle. Myasthenia gravis, again, is the neuromuscular junction, dealing with acetylcholine, kind of dealing with muscle, but not as much. And then if you look at C and D, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and gout, I mean, those are mostly with the joint, not so much the muscle tissue. So bottom line, what helped me to arrive at the answer? The one that was most specific to the muscle tissue, the one that dealt with breakdown or damage to the muscle. There you go. Final answer here is A. Congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. Again, if you need help with this particular area, if you're on the podcast right now, I'm telling you, you need to be ready for biomarkers. And what I did was create a cheat sheet that goes over the major ones that you need to know. The ones that are inflammatory markers, the ones that are cardiac markers, the ones that are just miscellaneous ones you need to know. I put that all in a cheat sheet for you that you can get by going into your show notes and clicking the link in there. Go freaking get it.